Before this video starts, I just want to say I'm not a licensed electrician. So if you're going to copy what I'm doing, um, make sure you follow your local codes and um, don't copy everything I do to a T because I'm sure there's some things that I could have done better. Um, so just figure it out on your own and don't take my word that this is how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> Doing electricity was one of the hardest things I've ever done and uh, trying to record it at the same time was near impossible. Um, this will be the one thing that I can't really record and show you guys because I was learning electricity as I was doing this and trying to teach you guys how to do electricity while I'm still learning is, is one, not even a good idea because I'm going to give you guys bad advice and two, it's just, I can't, I don't know everything to let you guys know everything. So, um, this will be kind of like a very basic video, um, when it comes to the drywall, and when it comes to uh, putting in the insulation, I will do a lot more detail, or at least try to do a lot more detail. But this was a hard thing for me to do. Um, electricity took almost two weeks to put it in the wall because I had to do it all myself. But I'm gonna have a professional like electrician come out soon and just double check everything to make sure it's good with code. Just because in the future, I don't wanna have to tear down my walls to put things properly so it matches code and stuff so so the first thing I did was drill a few holes through some of my studs using a DeWalt power drill with a 3 8 drill bit I could have maybe used a half inch drill bit but a 3 8 worked fine but as you'll see it was a little bit of a tight fit getting the wire through the holes I had to do a little bit more pulling than I wanted to do but I found out quickly that if you just straighten out the wire it goes through the holes much easier. So I straightened it out all the way up to the roof and uh, continued pulling it through. Inch by inch, that's how this project felt. Little inch of wire at a time until it was finally pulled through. So I wanna make sure I have enough slack to wire everything. So I stuck it through the top and I realized I needed a little bit more. So I was gonna stop there but I was like, well, I have enough wire. I might as well just go the rest of the way. So I pulled it down some more and just stuck it right through the bottom. And I knew then that I definitely had enough wire. Then I took some of these wire staples and I planned out every six inches or so, I'd put a wire staple. So I uh, straightened out my line, made sure there wasn't any curves in it. I wanted to staple only on the flat end. And... I began hammering. That's what it looks like all stapled up, nice and neat. Up here I tried to use a... it didn't work. Drilled some more holes in some spots that I thought I'd need some more holes. Tried to make them nice and smooth so none of my wires got damaged. And now this leads down to the bathroom outlet. Hammered in my last staple and then followed it around with my finger to make sure it was nice and flat. I think it's looking great. I uh, curled it up so it wouldn't move. So this is a GFCI outlet. Um, it's self-testing, um, it's 20 amps. This will be for my bathroom. So if I splash water on here for some reason, which I will never do, but if I did, I'll be protected and this will pop itself and won't uh, cause a fire. This gets wired just like any other outlet. Um, the neutral, which is the white, gets put into the silver screw. The power, which is the black wire, gets put into the gold screw. And the bare copper wire, which is the ground, gets put up under in that green screw. So this should be a completely working uh, GFCI outlet. I didn't get a chance to show you how I wired most of my outlets but I'll show you now with a piece of example wire. You see these tabs in these boxes. Well, you break out whatever tab you need to use. So if you need to have a wire come in, you just pop out one tab. And if you need to have a wire coming in and another wire coming out, you would pop out two tabs. But you just pop them out with a little hammer and a screwdriver and you just tap it until it pops. You take your yellow wire in your wall and you stick it through those tabs and you wanna have some sticking out um, I'd say like that much sticking out is a good amount 
Then you'll take your utility knife and you'll just cut a nice straight line down the wire. Don't press too hard because you don't want to cut the wires inside the casing. But once you've done that, you can use your fingers to just split it open and then pull it back and just cut off the extra. You also want to remove this paper and remove the paper off of the ground wire as well. And now you have your three exposed wires. But there's covering over these wires, so how do you get that off? There are two different ways to get the casing off of the end of these small wires. You can either take a utility knife and just kind of very lightly go all the way around the wire. Be careful not to cut yourself. Then use a pair of pliers to slide it off the end. And the other way is to grab a pair of these wire strippers and this little red thing you can kind of set to how far you want it to strip. So you stick your wire in until it hits that red point squeeze it down and it pulls off your wire. This is much easier than using a utility knife, but sometimes you have to make do with what you have to make do with. So now that you have your wires stripped, you'll just take your pliers, grab it with the very point of your pliers and just kind of make a hook. And that hook will go on the silver screw on your outlet terminal. And same with your power. And same with your ground. So when you put these on the outlet, try to remember which way is righty tighty, lefty loosey, because you want to hook it so that way when you twist it to the right to lock it down, it feeds the wire deeper into the screw rather than pushing it back out. So each one just hooks on to their own screw and the bare copper wire on the green screw. And there it is all secured in the box. Uh, the wires are tucked away nice and safe behind there, so this should be great. When you're making connections to split into two outlets, make sure you're always putting it inside one of these boxes, so that way it can't touch any of the insulation or catch anything on fire. Uh, it's part of code that you have to have all your splices inside these plastic boxes, or fiberglass. I think they're made of fiberglass. I did also decide to purchase an outlet tester. Um, so when the power is turned on, before I plug anything in, I'm gonna make sure I test all my outlets to make sure that my ground is good, my neutral and my hot wire are all good. If I see a red light, then I know something's wrong and I need to turn it all off. But yeah, just a little bit of safety. So the breakers I couldn't really do while I was recording. It's just kind of complicated, but I'll show you that the black, which is the main power wire, runs into the back of the fuse at that screw. This clamps down on this wire. And then the ground wire is the bare copper wire, and the white wire is the uh, neutral wire, which they both run into the grounding bar. And I repeated that for all three outlets, which you'll see where they run to uh, further on in the video. I also used clamps, like I'm supposed to, for all these holes. Um, I'm, I have a big one for this and a smaller one for this. I just haven't put them in yet. Um, this is where I'm going to run my main power wire through for the three mounting spots that they belong to. I didn't mean to knock this one out. Well, I mean, I obviously meant to knock it out, but I shouldn't have knocked this one out because I'm not really going to be using it for anything. So it's just kind of like an open hole and you don't really want that. But as this is my first time doing something like this, mistakes are bound to be made. And this was one of my mistakes. So one important thing to think about when you're wiring a sub panel is you don't want to lose track of which breaker goes to which. Luckily, I only have three, so it's pretty easy to keep track of. But if you had more, you might want to uh, label them definitely as you go. On the front of the solar panel box, there should be like a little list of uh, spaces. Those correspond to these spaces that you knock out. I knocked out the three corresponding ones to the three breakers I have, the bath, the bedroom, and the kitchen. But this will get mounted on the front, just like so. And you can see all the breakers fit in their respective little knockouts. But speaking of breakers, here are my three breakers. So this is the bathroom. This leads out 
does like a little loop right here and comes out, feeds up this stud, up through the roof, and it's tucked away back there nicely. And it's still tucked away, and it actually comes out. Uh, the lights are kind of blinding, aren't they? But it comes out right here, and it comes down, stapled up nicely. Uh, I can fix it up more a little bit later if I need to, but it comes down into this box right here. Next is the bedroom slash living room breaker. This comes out and takes a right, does a little S, and follows the bathroom breaker up the wall where it comes to the same spot, and then it shoots out into the studs on the roof. Um, I had to put them up there because you don't want them in the way of a ceiling when you put a ceiling in. So I just thought that was a convenient spot. I stapled them in all along the studs. And it comes all the way out to here where it goes back into the wall, follows it through right here, and it comes down to the first outlet in the bedroom. There's the second outlet over there, which is spliced up there. Uh, there's more cap connectors on them. And this comes through that stud over here, down the wall, through the wall, and then down again to the second outlet. So this is the entire back wall. This line is another extension of my be bedroom line. And it comes into this box where it runs into this outlet and back out of this box up through above the door where it comes down to a nice double box for my living room. This is where I'll plug my entertainment stand, TV, whatever else I need to plug in. Uh, it's nice to have a double for all that stuff because everything's got its own cord now. I also realized that this corner that was originally going to be my bathroom this will have to be my kitchen because with there being a sub panel, it can't go in the bathroom. I just found that out recently that you can't have a sub panel in your bathroom. So this is now going to be the kitchen area and there will be a fuse box in the kitchen and some cupboards. So the bathroom now, which was the kitchen, but now has to be the bathroom, runs down to the left and it goes down into the wall where it goes all the way back to here, where it goes underneath up into this box and it's spliced into two outlets, which yes, these will be GFCI eventually, just they're here for now. I don't have a bathroom, so it's not like it matters, but when the time comes, these will be GFCI. But now I have two bathroom outlets, I guess that's good, and one kitchen outlet. So we'll have to figure that out in the future, but for right now, that's just how this is gonna be. And here is the breaker panel all put together with the face on it and the markings so I know which one's which. Uh, I'll have to erase, I don't have an eraser, but I'm gonna ne make this neater later, but at least I know what they are for now. And here are the three breakers, all switched to on and all working. Now the ground rod, which I'll show you now. This I had to just twist and turn around until it sunk deep enough into the ground for me to hit it with this mallet and I just kind of beat it down all the way down as far as I could and then I put the uh, ground rod clamp on to the, uh, the with the copper ground wire. This is the copper ground wire that leads out of the sub panel and this goes into the ground and it's dug and buried and it comes out here where I stuck the ground rod. This is the insulated conduit, which runs out of the side of the house again. Um, I could have done a better job with my siding, but it's okay because I'm gonna get something that covers this stuff. But anyways, this is the conduit that comes out of the side of the house and it goes down into the ground where it is buried, which is what the trench was for. Here's what the conduit looks like from the inside. It runs down and out the hole along with the ground wire that is also clamped and runs down to its respective hole. So I went around with this outlet tester. Um, it's got two yellow lights and a red light. So you can see it corresponds to whatever could be wrong with it. It'll show up either no lights or it'll have a red light. And if it's just the two right lights, the yellow lights, then it's good. So I went around and I checked all my outlets and that is two yellow lights, even though they kind of look orange, but they're yellow, I promise.
Just to show everything's working, we'll flip all these off. See, my lights went out, because that's my bedroom. So now if I flip them all back on, it comes right back on. So if something were to happen, everything should turn off. A lot of people in the first video were mentioning that I should get a CO2 detector. Well, even though I'm not using the propane anymore, I still thought it would be a good idea to get one of these. So uh, to make sure that you guys know it works, if I press this button, it'll test it. So that's working really good, really loud. I won't be able to miss that. I also purchased myself a mini fridge. Now that I have outlets that can handle running uh, appliances such as this, I uh, went and got myself a mini fridge. A lot of people wanted to see my dog. So here's Obi. Hi girl. Oh, you stretching? Hi girl. But she has a nice long run out here to run back and forth on. She uh, loves to dig holes, as you can see. Lots of holes dug. She has lots of freedom. And yes, she can be off leash. She's a little hyper. Just clearing up some of the worries that some people had maybe about my dog. She is a free dog. Right, girl. Come here, baby. Sit. Good girl. Shake. Good girl. Yeah. She's a good dog. But I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who subscribed. This channel is growing so fast. I can't, I can't believe how fast it's growing. If you're interested in helping speed up the process or support the project in any way, my Patreon is in the description. Um, I'll post updates on there quicker than I'll be able to post them on YouTube. So you'll get to see in real time what's going on. You don't have to subscribe to that but it's $2 a month, so if you want to support, I, I would appreciate it. Um, I can use all the help I can get. <laughs> um, next video, we'll be doing some walls, so this place will start to look more like a home instead of whatever it looks like. <laughs> but thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.